Guys, remember when Scott Dunn made this video saying that the Ringu chapter would flop when it released to Dead by Daylight? Well, since Sadaku Rising DLC is now out in Dead by Daylight, I thought it'd be fun if we just go back and look at what Scott Dunn said about Ringu flopping and, and actually just look and see, did Ringu flop in Dead by Daylight? Was Scott Dunn correct? And so in case you haven't watched the video, you can go look in the top right corner at the video, but stay with me because I will just give you the TLDV. I guess didn't watch no it's a w obviously i need two v's to make a w uh basically the reasons scott said that the ringu chapter would flop and in case you saw about this video on twitter the person complaining about scott's video actually hadn't watched the video either so if you got your information from twitter i'm sorry to say that was a bad idea um because dbd twitter they kind of just go Bleh, like that and then they hit the keyboard Bleh, and that's them tweeting right that's dbd twitter for you in a nutshell the reason scott said that the Ringu chapter would flop is for a couple reasons. One, there's a lot of games coming out around the Ringu chapter releasing. Two, skill-based matchmaking hasn't been addressed and, and people are still upset about the skill-based matchmaking. And three, due to the fact that there are a lot of games coming around out just before the Ringu chapter, content creators are going to stop playing Dead by Daylight. And when content creators stop playing a game, that affects the numbers of the game's player base. Whether you like it or not, content creators do have a large influence. And if you were to look at Otstava, who is the number one content creator on YouTube and Twitch for Dead by Daylight, he hasn't played uh, Dead by Daylight since Elden Ring released. Uh, that's not true. He's played it once on Twitch, and that was for Sadaku's DLC release day. Um, and he got to play a little bit. Well, I say he got to play a little bit of Sadaku. It was really just a little bit of Sadaku because of the fact that there is a timeout error bug that has been preventing a lot of people from playing Killer or Survivor in Dead by Daylight. Um, if you're unaware of this bug because you never got it, then I, I love you because that is so amazing for you. Uh, but most people have been having uh, this bug, uh, whether or not it's frequently or just infrequently. I personally have had it practically every killer game that I've tried to stream. Uh, and it actually started before the DLC released. Uh, I figured out the issue to it. It has to do with an imbalance of players at your skill rating. So let's say there's six survivors queuing and three killers queuing. And the killers are going to get the timeout error created bug because there's too many killers queuing for that skill rating. And I figured that out because when I play during the day, there's too many killers at my rating. Uh, and if I queue up as killer, I get the bug. But if I queue up as survivor, insta queue. Uh, at nighttime, there's a lot more survivors online, less killers. I seem to get uh, the timeout error created bug way infrequently. Um, so, and actually, someone from Behavior reached out to me to say that the issue should be fixed, which was really nice of them to reach out to me personally and say, that I shouldn't experience that bug anymore. Nice to see I still have a friend at Behavior. Um, but yes, I digress. Those are the reasons why Scott John said that the Ringu chapter would flop. And I, I mean, you just have to look at the Steam chart numbers because at the end of the day, the only players that matter in Dead by Daylight are Steam players. I joke. It's the only place that we can actually look at player base numbers uh, because the rest of the platforms decide to hide their player base. December was when artists released. Well, technically it was the 30th of November. But let's go with December stats, right? 44.6 thousand average players playing on Steam during the artist release. And today in March, 2022, the last 30 days, 34.4 thousand players playing Dead by Daylight. So we've had a 10,000 player decrease since then. Let's not forget that the player base actually started dropping uh, after July. July, I believe was when the Resident Evil DLC came to Dead by Daylight. We had the biggest influx of players that we've had for a long time. We went up to 62.5 thousand people playing uh, Dead by Daylight, which is huge on average. I think Dead by Daylight was like number three most played game on Steam around the time. Um, and then immediately in August, we dropped 11,000 players immediately. Um, through a number of issues, right? Resident Evil release wasn't very smooth. There were bugs, there were issues. Resident Evil's map was actually disabled for so long um, and, and people were like, I don't really like Dead by Daylight, which is a fair reason not to play Dead by Daylight. And so, you know, big influx of players, small drop, but then since skill-based matchmaking release, we've actually dropped another 17,000 players. And a lot of people are very vocal about their dislike for skill-based matchmaking. I typically do cover skill-based matchmaking news because I've always been a fairly, I always seen it as a red flag for Dead by Daylight. I never felt like Dead by Daylight was the game that should have skill-based matchmaking, a casual game 
that the devs have always aimed to be almost party-like. I hate that term, party-like Dead by Daylight, because it really doesn't describe DBD very well. But oftentimes, that's how the devs balance the game. And so that's why people call it that. And now we have a, a win condition, which is escapes and kills. And it's a bad win condition because it doesn't really attribute to skill. Uh, but you guys know the video. Kills equals skills. So since Artist released a drop of another 10,000 players, 17,000 since uh, skill-based matchmaking, and 28,000 since Resident Evil's influx of players. Obviously all on Steam because the only platform that matters, like I said. Um, so... What does this mean for Dead by Daylight? Was Scott Jun right? Is the Ringu chapter a flop? Well, I actually think that is a massive issue for DVD. Uh, considering the artist is a original killer for Dead by Daylight and we hardly see her anymore in our regular games, it's always a treat when you get to play against an artist and then you remember why you don't like playing against her. Um, you know, she had 44.6 thousand people playing her. Well, playing Dead by Daylight when she released. And now we're at 34.4. It's a big decline. Um, it's worth noting that Steam players may have gone to Epic Games when you got the free uh, game on Epic Games. It released in December as well. So you could attribute some of the 10,000 10, out of 28 uh, towards the, uh, the Epic Games migration. I doubt it's that many, genuinely. But it's worth noting, right? Hackers have also been a massive issue in Dead by Daylight. So skill-based matchmaking and hackers tend to be the main reasons people don't like Dead by Daylight anymore. Um, and I think it's real shame because if you actually look at the last three chapters for Dead by Daylight, which is Pinhead, Artist, and now Sadaku, they've actually been pretty good chapters, all things considered. Really good perks for killers. You know, killer balance is starting to come back a little bit since Michaela added was added and boons were introduced. We've had a tiny nerf on boons. It's really not enough, but it's a tiny nerf. Killer perks are getting stronger and there's more variety of stronger killer perks. So you have different play styles available to you now. Uh, Sadaku is a really fun killer. Brings back the hit and run play style. Absolutely. Um, skill based matchmaking is still prominent, but hey, stretcher was, was removed, right? That's a pretty good thing. So actually, if you look at like the changes behavior making, really positive changes for the game, but they're just still ignoring that one little thing, just that tinsy little thing that the player base seems to dislike, which is skill-based matchmaking. And I think until they address skill-based matchmaking, we're just not going to see a, uh, a revival for Dead by Daylight. It just doesn't matter how much they do to bring new content into the game, new cool licenses into the game. Even if they add Springtrap, I think we're still going to see the player base decline. Uh, March 2021, 34.1% thousand players playing on steam march 2022 34.4 thousand players so that's an increase of 300 people <laughs> um after the huge influx of players that came in june with the resident evil dlc it's just sad really genuinely sad or bit dead by daylight that they managed to bring so many new people into their game and then literally chopped all their heads off with the changes they made with skill-based matchmaking and of course being a little bit slow with uh fixing some some bugs and and resident evil dlc not being as smooth as they wished it to be um so was scott jun right i guess is really the the question that we're asking well yeah he was 100 correct uh as were lots of people when i made a video before scott i believe talking about how it doesn't matter that behavior are doing all these really good things giving us more blood points fixing the game the skill-based matchmaking is still in the game. I made that video in January. Coconut made one last month. Uh, Scott made one, kind of, uh, without looking at Steam charts in January. Like People are very aware of the issues with Dead by Daylight, and I'm sure that behavior are as well, but it is not... Doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because skill-based matchmaking is still hemorrhaging players. I think even if you do fix skill-based matchmaking or disable skill-based matchmaking... People are already hurt, so you really need to like fix the issue, and then you need a new influx of people again, because then you can start to rebuild your game. Because a lot of people are becoming bored of Dead by Daylight. Uh, they play other games, and they, they just play Dead by Daylight almost when they don't have anything better to do. No other games that they want to play. It's their like filler game. That's not a good thing for DVD. That's never a good thing if you're the mediocre game that you play, boot up when you don't have anything better to do. That's a bad look. And so I think that's kind of where Dead by Daylight's heading right now. Um, and it doesn't really matter what DLC you release uh, because that will be a longevity issue 
for Dead by Daylight players. New players will come in. They will be excited by all the horror icons in DDD. Um, but eventually, the longevity of it is the decline uh, for most people, which is very sad. Um, especially because I genuinely do think Behavior have been doing a lot of good things recently. So I just want to make this video uh, short and sweet to, to talk about was Scott Jun right? How's Sadaku going? Are we happy as DVD players? Um, and I think ultimately, no, we're not happy. Uh, but we got uh, the ring to character. That's, I actually really like her, genuinely. Um, I'm going to go to stream on Switch now, play some uh, some Sadaku. Because I can. Because the timeout error well, apparently has been fixed. I haven't tested it, but a behavior dev told me it was. So I'm going to trust them for once in my life. <laughs>